Every time my ninth grade English class discussion hit a lull, we were brought back to the difficult question at hand with the sound of Mr. Davis stabbing the middle of his book with his index finger. Look in the text, he would tell us. By the time I got to Mr. Davis's 11th grade English class, all he had to do was give us the stare. <laughs> Over the intervening two years, we had come to realize that that's where all the answers were hidden, in the text. I came to Commonwealth from a school where English classes comprised zooming through books, answering comprehension questions, and watching the film adaptation as an added treat. <laughs> Nothing could have prepared me for the kind of close looking I was expected to do in Commonwealth English and elsewhere. In freshman year, I learned to glean the most information I could out of a small block of text. I examined word choice, metaphor, and tone in order to answer questions about a character's state of mind or the atmosphere of a book's setting, not just the plot. Soon I realized that the books I was reading were laden with nuances to be discovered, words begging to be underlined, connections waiting to be made. This kind of close examination added another dimension to reading a book. Reading was more active than I had previously thought. My job as a reader was to search for telling evidence implied in the author's words because it wouldn't be presented to me explicitly. I can track my progression in this process by examining the margins of the books I've read for class. The margins of the Iliad, the first major work we read in English 9, are pretty barren, with the exception of some Art Deco-esque borders I drew in. <laughs> the margins of James Joyce's Dubliners, which I read in junior year with Mr. Davis, and which is perhaps my favorite book of Commonwealth English, are crammed with arrows, notes, and exclamation points. It became obvious to me freshman year that close reading was ubiquitous in the Commonwealth curriculum when the same skills were also needed in history. Instead of accepting the facts as presented in secondary sources, I could see for myself what really went on. Reading primary sources in history was a way to cut through the dry tone of the textbook and focus on how people actually felt and what they saw. At first, the huge source book just seemed like a burden for my backpack, but I came to realize it was actually a very heavy zoom lens. It revealed the texture and depth of history to me. With close examination, I could uncover the rhetorical tricks demagogues used to sway crowds, and I could sift through their inflated accounts. I remember kicking back and relaxing while watching my first black and white fil film, Jules et Jim, in Madame Folkman's French class during freshman year, only to find out that I had to do a 20-minute presentation on a two-minute clip, two clip the next week. In the same way I had previously read books for the story, I had watched this movie for its unsatisfying, unsatisfying plot. But what I needed for my presentation was to examine how the filmmaker told the story and what sorts of emotions were conveyed to the viewer through camera angles, lighting, and perspective. Essentially, it was close reading with a fussy DVD player. <laughs> now I think about all I must have missed in the movies I've seen before. And despite all my training and close reading, I don't think I will ever be able to analyze a film fully, because for every two minutes of footage, there is at least 20 minutes of analysis. <laughs> Over the last two years, I have learned to take nothing I read or see for granted. Every passage I read, film I watch, or artwork I examine has been crafted deliberately by its creator to invoke an emotion in the reader or viewer. And through the kind of examination I have done, I have gotten closer to that original ideal. When I empathize with the awkward Aziz from A Passage to India, or feel almost sick while watching a boating scene in a Renoir film, it is my connection with that art at work. These four years of close reading have made me more observant, more conscious of the subtleties in my pleasure reading, the cinematic compositions around me, and what subway advertising is really trying to tell me. <laughs> I can't help seeing my world differently. Thank you.